This is Pastor Mike Hoggard, pastor of Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri, and head of prophetic research ministry with another Watchman video broadcast. It is not my pleasure today to introduce to you a new, a new watcher, a new overseer of the, uh, the events of man. I'm referring to Ophiuchus. It took me a while to learn how to pronounce Ophiuchus. The other name for him, well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to wait to get to the other name for him. Um, Ophiuchus, you need to understand a little bit. There was a, f a flurry of, of news articles that I came across, other people sent to me. Pastor Mike, you need to take a look at this. Is it significant? I, I think so. I, I really do. Uh, it has to do with, in fact, here's one of the articles that I uh, brought to you today. New astrology signs on a new astrology chart. New zodiac signs of change. Now, that in itself got my awareness, as it were, uh, because it just seems like that everything in this world today has something to do with change, transformation, reformation. I mean, it's in the business world, it's in the political scene, it is in the educational system, and it is in the religious movements of this world. Everything is about change and change. In fact, from what little I understand of the turmoil that is going on in the North African countries right now, it is about change that the people want to take place. And I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a, 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 a pattern exist in this world of things that are transforming right in front of our very eyes. I think that we are transforming this world, or not we, not you and I, but the, the powers that be, and we'll talk about those powers that be, are in the process of transformation and transforming this world right now. And so here they come out with this article, and some of the old-time astrologers say, ah, that's not the way we used to do it in the old days. Uh, but now they've come out with a new astrological sign. His name is Ophiuchus. Now, if you had problems pronouncing that, don't worry about it, because I had problems too. And I finally got, I read one uh, article about it, and it actually said, it is pronounced Ophiuchus. So, okay, his name is Ophiuchus. There's another name for him. I'll, I'll share that with you in just a little bit. Here is an emblem. Here's a picture of o Ophiuchus. Now, I don't quite understand... Uh, the astrological charts. I did some research, but I did some biblical-based research on it. Uh, it has something to do with the precession of the sun. In, in certain areas of the night sky, they're divided up into 12 equal areas. That's why we have 12 months. Um, and uh, the astrological sign, according to the astrologers, the astrological signs are basically when, this, when certain stars are in alignment with certain planets and the moon and the earth is in the right position and everything's just right, then certain things will happen to you. I can remember as a young man, I used to run home every day from j jump off the school bus and run into the house and grab up the Daily News Democrat, which is what we had in our little area here of Missouri. And uh, I used to look at, I found out that I was, a, I was a Gemini. Now, some of the astrologer people are saying, well, man, that's going to change my sign, man. I married a Sagittarius. Okay. Well, they say, don't worry about it. But anyway, and, and I'll tell you this, don't worry about that anyway. I'm going to show you the truth from the word of God concerning these rascals that are circling our planet right now. Wait till you see what I have to show you today. But anyway, I used to look on there, and it would have the, um, the uh, horoscope. For day, I was a young man. I'd look at, read the horoscope in, in the daily paper, and I'd go, and it'd say such and such and such and such, and I'd go, wow, that's exactly what happened to me today. That is, that is amazing. I didn't realize that what I was reading today was actually for tomorrow. It was for the next day. Because the idea behind astrology is that it says that these stars and the alignments of these stars, they, ha they have power. They have magical power. And they are guiding the universe. They're the, they're the watchers that are watching over mankind and leading us. This is all new age stuff now. It's leading us into, it's going to lead us into a brighter day, a new, a new era, a new dawning, a, an age of transformation. So it shouldn't, shouldn't strike us as peculiar that uh, now it's being reported that we are actually adding a 13th sign to the zodiac. His name is Ophiuchus. His real name is Serpentarius, which literally means the serpent bringer. Now, when I first 
saw this coming out. I'm going, okay, there were 12, but now there's 13. Now I start to understand a little bit about the nature of what's going on. So I'm just going to take a few minutes, going to go through my little King James Bible here, and let's look at the number 13 as recorded. Let's look at a, a pattern that is given to us in the scripture concerning the number 13. In Genesis 13, verse 13, the very first place that sinners are mentioned in the whole Bible is in Genesis 13, 13. It says, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. That means if there are limits to sin, they went way beyond that. Now, this is not just applicable to uh, how we use the word sodomite or sodomy uh, in today's lingo. It has everything to do with the, the spirit of wickedness, the spirit of, uh, of sinfulness. It has everything to do with the man of sin being presented to planet Earth. Um, if I can go to, the Bible's setting us up a pattern here uh, of, of numbers. I believe in patterns. I believe in order. I believe that God's Word shows you the order that exists in the rest of the world. And so when I see a 13th sign being added, I'm going, hang on here. I want us to look at some passages here. Now we're in Deuteronomy 13, and I want you to notice, I want you to notice now what God said. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer, of dreams. Do you remember Jared Lofner, the, the shooting in Tucson? He was a dreamer of dreams. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, all through the Bible we're being warned about signs and wonders where? In the heavens. He said, He giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known. Let us serve. He said other gods. Now I'm going to stop right here. The signs of the zodiac, and we have uh, Aquarius and Pisces and Aries and uh, Taurus and Gemini and uh, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpius, Sagittarius, Capricorn, and now we have Serpentarius. These, these are the gods of astrology. These are the, the watchers over planet Earth. Those that serve. Where do you find out what the word zodiac means? These are the watchers over planet Earth that are guiding the day-to-day -day operations of everything on this planet, leading us to a new era and a new world order. These are, these are part of the gods that it is referring to here. Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or the dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So here's, what ha here's what's happening here. God wants his people. I believe, that it, I believe that at one time America followed the laws of God. But God was warning us, and he said, if these people come along and they start leading you to other gods, God said, I'm going to prove you with them. I'm going to prove you with these false prophets and these dreamer of dreams. Now, one of the things that I read this week was about anywhere from 25 to 30 percent of Americans actually believe in astrology. That is one-fourth of the population of America believe that these gods circling the earth actually have powers over what's going on in this earth. If you remember back in the Reagan days, Nancy Reagan, the wife of uh, President Ronald Reagan, she actually consulted an astrologer on more than one occasion as to certain things that needed to be done. This is typical of where we're going in this country. We have a bad... Listen... We have abandoned the God of this Bible, and we have abandoned this Bible. And when you, when, you, when you take the Bible out of the equation of your life, it leaves a void there. And that void has to be filled. Some people fill it with sex. Some people fill it with drugs. Some with alcohol. Some with other mystical or spiritual experiences like levitation or, or contemplative prayer. 25% of Americans are filling the Bible void in their lives with astrology, saying that these gods now control what decisions they make. They have, they're going to bring us to a, the whole new age movement is based upon 
the fact that we are moving out of the so-called Piscean age, you know, the two fishes, and now we're moving into the age of Aquarius, that is astrology at its core. And God said, don't follow these people. Let me go to, uh, you know what, I skipped over something here. I, I, I tell you what, I just, um, uh, I have struggled all week getting this ready for presentation. This is about the seventh take that I've made in this recording. And I think God's breaking through here because God wants us to know something here. Joshua chapter 6, God is going to have, and, and this, this number 13 represents, it represents a kingdom, a spiritual kingdom, a kingdom of the gods, a kingdom that is represented by various cities in the scriptures. In this case, it's represented by Jericho. They are the inhabitants of the land that God wants to drive them out. He says, I can't have them here anymore. I'm going to kick them out. I want you to think about that. Because God, God's kingdom in heaven has got some people there, some angels there that shouldn't be there. And God's, God's going to kick them out. Okay, You listen to this now. Okay, In Joshua chapter 6, they take the Ark of the Covenant, they take the, the host of the armies of Israel, and they walk in a circle now. Watch this. They walk in a circle now around the city of Jericho. How many times, you know, I love doing this when I go to conferences and speak to people and things like that. How many times did they walk around Jericho? And everybody says, seven times. Oh, you're real smart. No, they walked around 13 times. One time a day for six days. Seven times on the seventh day. And they blew trumpets. And they shouted with a great shout. Are you getting this? This is a picture of what is happening in the end time. A picture of where I think we're going to could be very, very shortly. I don't know, but we're all about changing things right now, including the astrological charts of the Zodiac. So this number 13 represents a kingdom of the last days. And of course, you know, Jericho, the walls fell down and God's people conquered all that stuff. Now, uh, Acts chapter 13, interesting passage here. Uh, God showed me this one day several years ago. And I'll tell you what, I just, I mean, I tell you about, I lost it. Acts chapter 13, there is a, uh, a story here concerning the apostle Paul. The Bible says, um, in, uh, in verse 6, when they had gone through the island of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, okay, get this, a false prophet. Remember Deuteronomy 13? A false prophet who was showing people signs and wonders. He was a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus, which was with the... I'm going to stop right here. Bar-Jesus. I don't know much Hebrew. I know a little bit. The word Bar in front of a name denotes son. Son of Jesus. I want you to think of the Merovingian bloodline. This supposedly, Dan Brown talked about this in the Da Vinci Code, and believe it or not, a lot of people believe this garbage. The Da Vinci Code was all about supposedly a bloodline of Jesus Christ that they say exists to this very day. That's who this, I think, this bar Jesus represented was the alleged bloodline of Jesus Christ. Now, we know that Christ did not have any children. He did not marry Mary Magdalene. He did not do anything like that. We know that. So it's a setup. The Merovingian kings were supposedly come from King Merove, whose father, get this, was a Leviathan, a sea serpent. So now we understand now where this is going. Um, the Da Vinci Code itself was based upon uh, the, a, a book called Holy Blood, Holy Grail. Now I read this book. And it was all about a, a so-called secret society called the Priory of Zion. The Priory of Zion itself, in modern day, produced documents called the Dossier Secret. Now, some people believe they were a hoax. I don't know. Because in the Dossier Secret, there was a, um, it was sort of like a poem. And it was in 13 stanzas. And actually, the Dossier Secret, and this supposedly came from years ago, the Dossier Secret actually said that there were actually 13 signs of the zodiac. And the 13th one was Le Serpent Rouge. Pardon my French. The Red Serpent. That's the new astrological sign now is Serpentarius, or the one who was bringing you the serpent. Genesis chapter 3, the serpent was more subtle. And the serpent beguiled Eve, and she ate. She broke the commandment 
that God had. And I want you to think about where this is going here because here we have God who gave man uh, perfection in the Garden of Eden, never to die, gave him access to the tree of life and just said, okay, you can have everything else, you just can't have that. Typical human nature. You tell us, you give us everything and tell us we can't have that. That's the thing that we want. And so man became fallen at the hands of the serpent. We're headed there again. The Bible says that which was is that which shall be. So we have a false prophet by the name of Bar-Jesus in Acts chapter uh, 13. And of course, uh, the Bible goes on to say that uh, Saul, who was, who was later called Paul, rebuked him. And he had blindness. That is in the book of Revelation, blindness upon the kingdom. Now I'm going to go to the book of Revelation itself. And, uh, and I'm just getting warmed up, people. I am just getting warmed up here. Revelation chapter 13. Okay, We have a story here. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast. I want you to think about the sea and rising up out of the sea. Coming out of the, uh, the depths of the pit. Revelation chapter 17. We'll read that here in a minute. Coming up out of a, a pit. A chamber that's down in the sea. I want you to think about that because I have got something to show you here. People are being taught the mystery religions. Okay? I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. We also have in Revelation chapter 13, and I don't have time to go through this whole thing, we also have another here in Revelation chapter 13 verse 11. I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he, out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a, as a dragon. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth, causeth the earth, and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Remember, it's the false prophet who causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, six things, to receive a mark in their right hand or their forehead. So the number 13 here is highly significant. And remember, I told you about a kingdom. And that kingdom, Revelation chapter 17, verse 5, upon her forehead, whose? Her, Jericho, Nineveh, Jezebel, you name it. Upon her forehead was a name written. Mystery, Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Thirteen words in your King James Bible. That's what that number 13 denotes. It denotes a, a kingdom that's coming on the earth. A kingdom that represents rebellion against God, that represents the vine of Sodom and the, and the gall and the bitterness that comes along with that. That's what that represents. We taught about the New Age. Now, I'm expanding it a little bit for you this week because of what we've been seeing going on in the news. They're making a huge deal about now there's a number 13 sign to the Zodiac. And I'm just going to take you through the scriptures and educate you a little bit about what this is all about. Back in Deuteronomy chapter 4, now we're going to put this on the screen here. Deuteronomy chapter 4, God said, Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. Pay attention, he said. Watch what's going on. For ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spoke unto you in Horeb, out of the midst of the fire. He says in verse 19, Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, the moon, and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Now I'm going to stop right here because what God is saying here is God said, when you were at Mount Horeb and, you, and I came down in the cloud, he said, you didn't see me. You didn't see my face. You didn't see how I appeared. You didn't see any of that. And he said, be careful and take heed unto yourselves, lest a false prophet comes and lead you to worship the sun, the moon, and the stars. And then he says, the host of heaven. Consistently, all through the scriptures, stars are, stars are equal to angels. Okay, I want you to understand this. Very, very important. Good ones and bad bad ones. There are evil angels that are the agents of Lucifer right now that are trying to bring in the contrary to the kingdom of God, that is the kingdom of the Antichrist in these last days that we're living in. And God said, don't worship, the, do not regard these stars as your gods because they're not. Don't worship them. 25 to 30 percent of Americans are worshiping 
false gods in the form of astrology in this country. Now, let me explain this a little bit, and we're going to kind of uh, go back over some material that we've covered uh, in the last several years in the various videos that we've done here. We're going to teach you a little bit about the lights that are up in the, in the firmament of heaven and how God describes them. So we're going to go back to the very day that they were created. And I believe that Lucifer, I believe that all of the devils, all of the angels, I believe that they were created on this particular day that we're going to talk about. I do not believe in a, as some people say, a gap theory between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. Some people, including some people that you've probably read their books, watched their videos, and sent them money, they will teach you what's called a pre-Adamic race. In other words, that God created this world before the one you and I live in right now, and it was inhabited, and, and it was destroyed. And, and they say, you know, the original Hebrew said the earth became void. That's not what this Bible says. Be careful about believing the wrong thing. If it's not in the Bible, it doesn't exist. And so anyway, they, there's some people out there that believe in this pre-Adamic race and all this stuff. And they said all the angels and devils and everything like that, they were created back then and all this stuff. That's good. Uh-uh. I think the Bible's telling us that they were created, and this makes sense now, on day four. Look at what the Bible says, Genesis chapter 1. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs now let's count here signs and for seasons and for days and for years four things here on day four and let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and in verse 16 and god made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule. Look at that phrase. Rule over the day and what? Rule over the night. And to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now, for a complete expanded uh, teaching on this, get our video, the King James Code. I think it's volume three, the number four, if that makes sense to you. But it's the King James Code teaching Bible numerics on the number four. And I'll explain way, way, way deep on this idea of the number four being a number for the spiritual realm or the spirit kingdom. And so, and, and I'm going to illustrate that. So here we have day four. We have the angels, the stars of the heavens, placed into the firmament and created on day four. And they are for signs, for seasons, for day, for years. Now, let's, let's stop here. Let's look at the practical aspect of this, okay? We know that, uh, and I'm not really good at finding constellations. You know how they used to, you know, they used to tell you in school, you know, when you go out uh, in the night sky, you know, the old shepherds used to go out there and sit and they go and look at the stars and they draw pictures and they go, that looks like a bull. And I always looked up there and I'm going, I don't see no bull up there. Oh, that one looks like, uh, that one looks like a woman holding a pair of scales. No, it, it doesn't really. Now, there are two of them that I cannot easily identify. The Big Dipper. Why? Because it looks like a dipper. Okay? And Orion. For some reason, I just recognize that one. But the Big Dipper is at one time of the year, and Orion is at another time of the year. And God said that the procession of these constellations in the night sky would determine signs and seasons and days and years. You might know old farmers. My dad, when he, he planted a beautiful garden every year, and he would always get his copy of the Farmer's Almanac to look at the signs that were going on so he would know when to plant. God gave us those things for that reason, to divide that. Now, the corruption of that is, is that these things are not just for signs, but they determine the course of what happens on planet Earth. It is the doctrine of, we're going to look at this, as above, so below. I want you to think about this because with everything that God has, there's a corruption of it. But we're dealing with the spiritual kingdoms, uh, signs, seasons, days, years, all created uh, on day four. So that number four is stamped there. And I teach that this is, and I think the Bible's teaching this too, this is a, a reference to the spiritual kingdom or what people would call the fourth dimension. Notice Ephesians chapter 3. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, that's number one, length, that's number two, 
depth, that's number three. There are three dimensions right there. And I remember the first time I read this and I'm going, oh, wow, this, it says the three dimensions. But then it mentioned height. And I went, it's mentioning four different directions here. So I began to study this and began to look through the scriptures. That word height, that fourth one, is called the word height. Notice what the Bible says about this particular word. Job 22, 12. Is not God in the height of heaven? So height is an explanation of where heaven is or where the spiritual kingdom is or the spiritual realms. They're in the fourth dimension. And behold the height of the stars, how high they are. So right here, the Bi and I believe the Bible. The Bible's telling you that the stars exist or the angels exist in a different realm or a different world than you and I exist in in our three-dimensional space. Psalm 102, 19. For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary from heaven did the Lord behold the earth. So I want you to, want you to comprehend this now that we're dealing with, uh, when we're dealing with the stars, we're dealing with a, a spiritual kingdom. Okay, uh, and, and again, these guys are, are leading us into a new era, a new time of transformation. Even the zodiac itself is divided up into f four groups of three. And I want, you, I want you to remember that. Four groups of three, because I'm going to show you something that was meant to be a, a, an image marker in the minds of people. It was a movie. We're going to talk about a movie today. Where do you see this? Okay. Um, four groups of three. They were marked by the summer solstice, the autumnal equinox, the winter solstice, and the vernal, vernal equinox. Isn't that amazing? There just happens to be four seasons, and these signs and, and seasons and days and years, these stars were meant to show those particular things. Now, anytime we're dealing with this number four, here we, we could be talking about uh, good angels. We could be talking about the gospel, which speaks of a spiritual kingdom. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, four things. New Jerusalem coming down from heaven, and it's a city built how? Four square. And so I want you to think about the four living creatures that suspended the throne of God on the firmament. Ezekiel chapter 1, Revelation chapter 4, uh, sort of denote that God's kingdom and God himself is not in this three-dimensional realm, but he is in this fourth dimension kingdom. That's why these, when you look in Ezekiel chapter 1, it looks weird, okay? And you can't make any sense out of it hardly unless you think in fourth dimensional terms. So go back and read that. But now we're going to deal with another group of these angels. There's the good angels, and there's the bad angels. Now I will tell you this. Let me, let me show you this. In Revelation chapter 12, we see a war going on. Okay, we see a war going on. Um, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 4, and his tail, the dragon, drew a third part of the stars of heaven and then cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman. Okay, So we know that there's a bunch of angels up there and we know that some are good and some are bad. How many of them are good? Two-thirds. How many of them are bad? One-third. That means that they which are for us are more than they which are against us. I want you to think about that. Okay, This is good. These bad angels, evil angels, the number four, shown to us in Ephesians chapter 6, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. There is a war going on, people. There's a war going on. There's a war going on for your soul. There's a war going on for your home, your children, your grandchildren, uh, uh, for our churches, our denominations, our faith. There is a war going on for our country and our world. And we're wrestling not against those who attend the Bilderberg meetings. We're wrestling against the spirits that brought them to that meeting. That's who we're wrestling against. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, number one, principalities. Number two, powers. Number three, rulers of the darkness of this world. Remember what we just read out of Genesis chapter 1. On day four, the four things there, and they were to be rulers of darkness. Rulers of the darkness of this world. And spiritual wickedness, remember Sodom, where? In high places, in the spiritual realm, where there is earthly wickedness, and there is spiritual wickedness. Far, far more wicked than earthly people can do, okay? Because earthly people can be saved and redeemed. 
angels and principalities and powers cannot. They do not have redemption offered to them. Now, so I want you to think about that when we think of the zodiac divided into four groups of three. They're divided into four groups and they correspond to the summer, uh, spring, uh, let me get this right, spring, summer, fall, and winter. That's what they correspond to. Remember the teaching that we did here a while back where I showed you the sun's progression in the equinoxes or the um, the two zodiac signs of Capricorn and Cancer, the sun rising and setting in a yearly cycle, exactly 46 degrees. That's the number for the temple of the human body. The 46th book of this Bible, 1 Corinthians, where it tells us that our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So you kind of understand now the dark conspiracy that is going on uh, with these people. Here is the signs of the zodiac. They're, they're circling around the earth as watchers or the gods that are trying to determine the fate of mankind. So we look in Daniel chapter 2 and we understand a little bit more then about the secret that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed about that Daniel revealed in Daniel chapter 2. And he said, here it is, the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. I'm going to stop right here, okay? <clears throat> uh, study, study what s uh, astronomers, not astrologers, astronomers, the scientists who study the stars, understand what, what they know about these, these big gigantic balls of hydrogen or whatever gas inside of there, is that even in our own sun, which is a star, Inside of the, the core of these stars, there's this massive nuclear furnace going on. Okay, A furnace is an alchemical sign, by the way. And what it's doing inside of these gigantic star furnaces is that it's converting the, the elements inside of there to iron. And when you hear about a star that uh, a, a star that uh, collapsed on itself, it lit it it fell, okay? It fell in on itself. The reason being was was that this star had converted so much of itself into iron. Iron's very heavy that literally its own gravitation pulled itself in and it collapsed and its light went out. Think about that. That's why he's referring to this as the iron kingdom. The fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. That is a dominion idea. And as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. Now he's going to explain what that, what that all is all about. In verse 42, and he said, as, as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they, the fourth kingdom, the principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, the zodiac signs, one of which is named Sagittarius. And it, Sagittarius is the, the emblem of a man that has been fused in with a beast. Where do you find out what the word zodiac means? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And so the emblem here, this, the, what God's telling us, what God is revealing in this gigantic secret here, is that this fourth kingdom, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness, these evil angels, the New Age says that they're going to come down to the earth. Now, God said in Revelation 12, that's not how it happens. They're cast down. I threw them out. Remember when God told Joshua to go into the land, he said, get these people out of here. Get them out. They're not to be in my kingdom. This is exactly an earthly picture of a heavenly idea. God's kicking them out. So they're not floating down the earth. They're falling to the earth. I want you to think of stars falling. Where do you see where I'm going with this? Okay. So anyway, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. The seed of men is man's DNA. Now, here's the 
really interesting part. I, and the news came on one morning. I got up. I'm trying to wipe the sleep out of my eyes. And they said, oh, 13th sign of the zodiac. And I'm going, okay, 13. And they said, it's Ophiuchus. Ophiuchus. And then they showed the emblem, the sign of Ophiuchus, Serpentarius, the serpent bringer. Let me show you his, his sign. It's the caduceus. And there's a lot of signs here. Notice the astrological, zodiological signs there. Notice we have the horns of a bull. Hmm, think about that. And we have the wings. Uh, that's the emblem of uh, Osiris, the sun god. And we have the pentagram, Satan's five-point plan, Revelation chapter 9, the fifth trumpet sounding. And we have an emblem of the cross with a rose on it. That's the rose of crucian. The, the rose is the emblem of the female, the cross, the male, and they're fused together. That's the sons of God, daughters of men. We have the ox symbol, which is another symbol of male and female fused together. And we have a rod, like an arrow. Okay, We have a dart that goes straight up. It's a phallic symbol. It's a symbol of Osiris or the, uh, the Antichrist. And we have DNA twining around it like two serpents. That's the symbol of the serpent bringer. So this, when they say that the zodiac is being transformed, it represents the transformation of mankind. Now, as I said earlier, this has everything to do, this, this new sign being added and what it represents, this bringing the serpent. Now, we're going to bring, we're going we're to restore the old religion they talk about. Okay, remember in Star Wars, it was about the old religion, which was the, the Jedi religion, okay? Uh, we're going to restore the old religion. When you hear in the church them talking about ancient practices or ancient ideas or when you hear this idea of ancient future church what they're doing is that they're digging up the old religion of Babylon and they're bringing it in through the serpent who was more subtle than any any creature or any beast and so it has to do with the heavenly realm Becoming in control of the earthly realm. The fallen angels and Lucifer itself and the Antichrist coming up out of his chamber, out of, out of the sea. Think about that. Oh, I can't wait to get to this. Um, I'm, you know I'm setting you up, okay? I'm trying to teach you this so, I can, so I, when I show you the video clip, you'll go, oh, wow, okay? It, it makes sense. It really does. It's about a, a kingdom, okay? Okay. Um, in, in, on this video that we talk about the fourth dimension, the scientists think of the fourth dimension as like looking into a mirror. You're looking at your exact opposite. I don't know if you look in a mirror. When you raise your right hand in a mirror, actually the guy in the mirror, that's his left hand. Okay? So it's a, it's a mirror image of this world here. And this is interesting because Job described this when he was referring to the sky. In Job 37, 18, he said, Hast thou with him spread out the sky which is strong and is a molten looking glass. Do you remember Alice? The guy who was writing about Alice, Lewis Carroll, was a British mathematician theorizing on the fourth dimension. And he said it's like going through the mirror to getting into the opposite world. Okay, Because when you look into a mirror, when you look at it, it looks like it has depth. When you look behind the mirror, there's no depth there. That's what they're describing here. So Job says that the entire sky is like a, a, a mirror image of what? Uh, of what's going on here on this earth. Now, I'm going to give you the biblical end of it, and then we're going to show you the reverse of it. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye. This is our, our brother, our friend Jesus Christ, teaching us how to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That is the hope of every born-again Bible-believing Christian, is that one of these days, God's will, which is performed in heaven, will be performed in planet earth. Not a bad prayer to pray. You want God's will in your marriage, in your life, in your family, in your church, in every realm of life. That's a wonderful prayer to pray. Okay, So here we have God's kingdom being inside the hearts of men. And he visualizes that to us. This is so neat. You've got to see this. Okay, This is why God described Israel 
in the following manner. Genesis chapter 22. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed. Notice this. As the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of of his enemies. I want you to think about that. Genesis 26, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. You know what God was saying here? God, you know what God was saying? Look, I have a plan here. I have a plan. And it's through the faith of Abraham, through Jesus Christ, that I'm going to take my people, and I'm going to make them like the stars of heaven. They're the angels. They're, they're the gods. Okay, God said, I will make man who I made to be lower than the angels. I will exalt him. Jesus said in the resurrection, we shall be as the angels of heaven. Not the fallen ones, but we shall be the as the angels of heaven. So thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. God taking lowly man of a low estate through the cross of Jesus Christ and raising him up to be immortals. That's God's plan. And I caught this years ago. I saw this and I went, God, I love you. Because remember, God created, God created the procession of the stars in the heaven divided up in, in sort of equal time periods of 12. When you look at the wilderness camp of Israel, this is how God told them to camp themselves. He said, put the tabernacle in the middle. And then I want you to surround the tabernacle with how many tribes? Three on the north, three on the east, three on the south, and three on the west. Just like the signs, the seasons, the days, and the years. With everything that God does, there is an exact opposite in the devil's kingdom. That's what astrology is all about. So if you want to understand astrology, don't, don't study astrology. Study the Bible, and, you, and you'll get it. You will understand. And God wants to make Israel. He says in Exodus chapter 37, the dry bones in the valley that once they're prophesied over twice, that's the first and second coming of Christ, and the Spirit comes in, the, the, the four winds of the gospel are breathed into them, then they are raised up the mighty army of Israel. We have a picture, again, of that equating it with the stars in heaven and their procession. Remember Sisera? Remember the guy who, you know, had the spike driven through his head and he was fastened to the ground? That in itself is a picture of the cross being fastened as a nail in a sure place upon where? The place of the skull. This is so beautiful, people. But remember Deborah, when they finally got that victory, Deborah sang a song in the book of Judges. And here's what she sang. They fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. Now, that is a reference, I believe, to Revelation chapter 12 and the war that, that goes on in heaven. But also, I believe, God's people as well as the stars of heaven. We're fighting this battle right now. And by the way, because Christ died on the cross, we win. We win this battle. Now, I want to go back to this idea of the stars in their procession. Here is the circle of the zodiac. I want you to notice that they're sort of encompassing there, that they are part of the constellations there. I mentioned earlier um, the verse in the King James Bible, Thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Now, I mentioned also earlier about this concept of as above, so below. These evil angels want to rule over planet earth and make it part of their kingdom. Okay, And uh, I talk often about this false, stupid, idiotic Bible called the Message. By it. it is a New Age Bible that is being used in thousands of churches all across this country and all across this world. It's crazy. Here's what the Message Bible says in that verse. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Do what's best. As above, so below. Uh, need I say more? 
And we can see all around us this emblems, emblems of the desire of mankind for this heavenly beast, evil angel realm to come down to us and rule and reign over us. In fact, we even sent them a beacon. We, we sent them two. We sent them two signals telling them that it's okay for us, okay for them to come down to us and reign over us. When did we do that? There are, there are the, 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 um, the constellations, the groups of stars, the visible stars are classified and they're arranged. And of course, God arranged them, but the scientists and everybody's cast with it. There are 88 of those constellations, okay? Beasts, angels, evil angels. There are 88 of them, okay? September 11th, 2001, terrible event. What happened after that was that for 33 nights, we sent what was called into the heavens the Towers of Light. On one Tower of Light, there were 44 bulbs. On the other tower, there was 44 bulbs, 88 in all. We sent, we sent a message to the heavens saying, let's go ahead and start the new world order. These animals, these beasts, these evil angels want to control the things that are going on. He favors the undertaking of a new world order. They are the ones who are in favor of bringing in a new world order. In the Capitol Dome, the Capitol Dome is encircled by the 12 signs of the Zodiac. Here it is, the rotunda part of the U.S. Capitol. We have George Washington, who is the as above, so below God sitting there. And he is surrounded by, and we're sort of dealing with this idea of as above, so below. In other words, the, the, these kingdom of the constellations uh, are presenting themselves to planet Earth. And now planet Earth is being brought to an, a day when we want these guys to come down and rule over us instead of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we see it in the Capitol building. Here in the rotunda, you have the God, uh, George Washington, the apotheosis, man becoming God. And he is surrounded by all these women here. Now remember, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Well, if you count these, there's exactly 13 of them. Okay? The procession of the constellations, the zodiac. Now the 13 signs of the zodiac encircling looking down, gazing down from the Capitol Rotunda down to all of the lawmakers in Washington, D.C., Washington, D.C., favoring their undertaking, even, even in the great seal of the United States. How many, how many stars do we have present there? There's 13. That's the 13, now the 13 signs of the Zodiac bringing in a new world order. And this goes all the way back. And, and I didn't have really time to compile the information this week. It'd probably be for another video or whatever. But even in something I learned years ago, even the arrangement of the Great Pyramids in Giza, okay, they arrange perfectly with the belt or the bands of Orion. As above, so below. The belt of Orion, if you'll notice this graphic here, the belt or the bands of Orion, those three stars there, they point you in a straight line to what was the number one preeminent God star of all of the kingdom of Egypt, and that was the star Sirius. It was referred to as the dog star. And anytime you saw a dog or a jackal in, in Egyptian uh, um, engravings or hieroglyphics or whatever it was, it was a reference to the star of Isis, Mystery Babylon the Great. That's who she is, 13 words. The star Sirius was associated with Isis, and it was, it was like their main god star. Uh, I've read a lot of books, I, UFO things like that. All throughout the UFO movement, the New Age movement, all the occult realms, they have always worshipped the God star of Sirius. Now, Sirius is just a star. God is the one who created those stars. We even have, we even have a radio company. It's, it's satellite radio is what it is. What we've, what we've done is we put an artificial star in the sky. And we called it 
Sirius. Notice the logo here, the dog, the star, the, the all-seeing eye star logo of Sirius Satellite Radio. Okay? It represents the God of the New World Order or Lucifer himself. Sirius, and, and if you, I don't know if you don't know much about astronomy, I can recognize Orion. And when I go out at night on a clear night, I can see that Orion's belt points directly in a straight line to what is the brightest star of the night. Okay, the, the brightest star of the night, which is Sirius. And this, if we think now of this image, and I, I'm, I'm getting to this now, if we think now of this image here of Sirius being an emblem of Lucifer himself who falls to the earth. I'm going to show you a clip, a movie that you probably watched that, uh, you know, movies are designed to really suck us in. And we go, oh, wow, and we always root for the hero. In this case, in this particular movie, the hero was a man by the name of Truman Burbank. Truman Burbank was, was born, was owned by a company, and he was born to be uh, a, t a TV show person. Okay, His whole life was going to be, I don't know if you saw the movie, his whole life was going to be a TV show. I, I went back and I watched this thing because there was something that just, uh, it just amazed me about it. I want you to watch the very opening scene of this movie as Truman Burbank now comes out of his house. The cameras are on him and Truman is in this He's in this big, gigantic dome chamber called Sea Haven. And he's trapped there. And everybody around him is an actor or an actress. And he's inside this dome chamber. And, and, and they, have a, they have a fake sun, they have a fake moon, and they have fake stars. These are like studio lights. And so I want you to notice now the first scene of the Truman Show where Truman is now going to receive enlightenment that things are not what he thought they were. Take a look. It's just me. Come on, Pluto. A, a star falls from heaven. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? And this star, this star is not like Gemini, it's not Castor and Pollux, it's not Rachel, it's not Beetlejuice. This star is Sirius, the god of Egypt. That's who this star, and the star falls from heaven. And now Truman is beginning to find out that things are not what they seemed. And now Truman is going to start looking for a way out of the chamber that he's in. And by the way, the guy who, the, who is the producer of the show, that he calls himself, you'll hear this, the creator, um, who dwells in the moon and he dwells in the star from his control booth there. His name is Kristoff. Okay, who is of Christ. He is, he is a picture of God, Christ, who has Truman trapped in the, in the dome chamber. Okay? Think about the beast in the pit, and he's locked in there. But Truman's going to escape. So he gets on a boat, he goes out, he literally rises up out of the sea. We notice that he ascends a staircase of 18 steps. I counted these. That's six plus six plus six. Listen to the language. In fact, even at one point in the Truman Show, uh, you see the producer, the creator, Christoph, sort of wave his hand over his son inside of this dome chamber. And I want you to notice his ring. It has four sections to it of three dots apiece. That's the Zodiac, people. And I want you to listen to the language now as, as uh, Truman now has ascended his 18-step staircase. 
and he's about ready to rise up out of the dome chamber, out of the sea. Listen to what's said. Who are you? I am the creator. Then who am I? You are the star. I am the creator, and you're the star. And now the star, and the movie ends with the star rising up out of the pit, coming out into freedom. People are being trained in this great paradigm shift by the zodiac. I, I told you earlier this word zodiac. You know what it means. The, the first part is zoe or zoa. When we go to the zoo, we go to the place where they keep all the, the animals, the beasts, the living creatures. That's what zoa means. It means living creatures. Or The Bible uses two different phrases. It uses, number one, it, in Ezekiel and Revelation 4, it uses living creatures, and then it says beasts. So they are the same thing. Okay? And remember, these are not earthly beasts. These are fourth dimensional spirit realm creatures. Okay? The word zodiac literally means circle of beasts, circle of these, of these evil angels. That uh, I want you to get this now. They encompass the earth. And when I saw that, I immediately I, I started saying, God, there are places in the Bible where the enemies encompassed God's people. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some of those. I'm going to show you what God showed me this week. Psalm 22, I want you to think of Jesus on the cross, okay? Because it starts out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's what Jesus said on the cross. Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. So there's the procession there of the, uh, of the 12 zodiacs. Now I'm going to show you this, okay? I found six... I wish I could have found more. I found six of the zodiac signs inside of Psalm 22. Notice this. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Jesus was born of a virgin. And there's the sign of Virgo in Psalm 22. Psalm 22, 12. Many bulls have noticed this compassed me. Now I'm going to stop right here. Here we have Taurus. He's the bull. He represents this kingdom of beasts that are circling. And that word compass in the Bible, by the way, the Masonic symbol of the compass. Think about it. Okay? The compass, they compass about Jesus Christ. They're surrounding him. That's the circle of these 13 constellations, of these 13 zodiac signs encompassing planet Earth to destroy them. And here they were. The Bible is showing you the, the spiritual picture of what took place at the cross. They compassed him. Many bulls have compassed me. That's Taurus. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. That's, that's, so we have Virgo and now we have Taurus. Psalm twenty two thirteen. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. So there's Leo compassing Jesus. Psalm twenty two fourteen. I am poured out like water. There's Aquarius and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. There is Aquarius pouring out the, the vengeance of Almighty God. Psalm twenty-two, sixteen: 16. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. And by the way, Sirius, the dog star, part of the Orion area, is in Gemini, which represents duality, the, the dual nature or the opposite, sons of God, daughters of men together. That's what that represents. There's Sirius located there. So we have, so we have, uh, we have Virgo, we have Taurus, we have Leo, we have Aquarius, and now we have Sirius. And then watch this. Because everybody says these never existed. Psalm twenty two twenty one. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. Capricorn is a unicorn. Six of the zodiac signs showing they had surrounded Christ on the day that he was crucified because they wanted him dead. Now, I'm going to show you another picture of this. In case you don't quite get that, I'm going to show you another picture of this now 
from the Old Testament, the book of Judges, we have Samson, who was the judge of Israel, okay, who was the Nazarite, okay. Um, his birth was prophesied and all this stuff. Now I want you to look at this. In Judges chapter 16, verse 2, the Bible says, And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson has come hither, and they what? They compassed him in. They the, Literally, like the Zodiac, they circled him in. The beast surrounded him. The strong bulls of Bashan and Leo and the dogs compassed him, made a big circle around him. Notice this. And laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city. Do you, re, do you remember what God said to Israel? He said, you shall be as the stars in heaven and you will possess, you will possess the gates of your enemies. Think about what Christ told Peter, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, the rock of your confession and me, I will build my church, and the gates of your enemies, hell, will not prevail against you. Look at this. Laid for him all night in the gate of the city, and were quiet all the night, saying in the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. When did they kill Jesus? They were up all night and they killed him in the, in the morning. They began to crucify him at the, uh, in the morning. And Samson lay till midnight and rose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all, and put them where? On his shoulders. What did Jesus do when he went to the hill called Mount Calvary, Golgotha? He laid the cross upon his shoulders, and he put them on his shoulders and carried them, look at this, up to the top of an hill that is before Hebron. Here we have Samson and the Zodiac, the beast, have circled him around about, and they're going to kill him. And yet Samson gets victory over them because he takes what was meant to trap him in and enclose him. Think about things in your life that are trying to keep you in bondage. And Christ takes the gates of his enemies on his shoulders and he took them on top of the hill and there he got victory over all the beasts that surrounded him. I absolutely love this. 2 Samuel chapter 22 verse 5 When the waves, think of Aquarius, when the waves of death compassed me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid, the sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God, and he did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. Notice this. Because remember, I, I, I made a point to, to illustrate to you earlier that um, the war in heaven between the, between the good angels and the bad angels, okay, Lucifer being one of those bad angels, there was one-third of the angels that was for Lucifer. Man, that's, that's got to be a lot. Well, there was two-thirds th that were for Michael and for, for Jesus Christ. Okay, So that's more, isn't it? Notice this story. I, I like to look at this as a story of the spiritual warfare that goes on around us every day. 2 Kings chapter 6. Remember Elisha. Okay? Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great, look at that word, host host okay and they came by night think of the stars and and did what compassed the city about and when the servant of the man of god who was elisha risen early and gone forth behold an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots and his servant said unto him alas my master how shall we do and he answered fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full. Mountain's a picture of heaven, by the way. The mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. You know, it, it does. It feels like in our lives sometimes that... The enemy has just circled you around. It's got you trapped on all sides. Remember the Israelites there uh, in, in there by, by, um, by the Red Sea. And here is Pharaoh and his chariots and horses. Remember what the description of the, the beasts, the angels that are in the bottomless pit in Revelation chapter 9? Chariots and horses. Same thing, people. God's trying to illustrate to us that as we approach these last days, we really don't have anything to fear. God's got them all. Okay? And by the way, they have the faces of men, Revelation chapter 9. Okay? And Jesus said, don't, 
don't be afraid of the faces of men. Don't be afraid of them. Colossians 2 verse 13, it was all done at the cross. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened, he's made you alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, doing what? Nailing it to his cross, where the beast surrounded him, the zodiac, and having spoiled who? Principalities and powers he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. That's why Psalm 22, the number 22 is the number for revelation. And, Christ, and here we have Christ saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And here we have Christ, a picture of Christ on the cross, because it says what he said on the cross. And they said, they parted my garments and cast lots for my vesture. They mocked him in Psalm 22, and they pierced his hands and feet. So here is Christ with all these evil angels encompassing him that we see in Psalm 22. They compassed him about. And yet Christ made a show of his enemies openly, triumphing over them in his death on the cross. It's the finished work of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 8, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor who? Angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, neither nor height, nor depth, nor any other what creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ephesians chapter 1, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And I'm here to tell you, this, this zodiac thing is sweeping this, and now we have this new sign, the serpent bringer. Now he's going to bring the serpent to mankind, and man's going to have his DNA all messed up, and it's, going to, and it's a terrible, terrible time. God says, don't worry about it. I, I, I've already defeated them. I, I, we, we already possess the gates of our enemies. We already have it. Can these evil angels separate us from the love of, of Christ? No. They can't do it, okay? And um, there's a couple places in the Bible where you find references to some of these constellations. And I want you to notice this, and here's really what I want you to get to. There are those who choose to worship the stars. I choose to worship the one who made the stars and who holds them in his hand and controls them. They don't tell God what to do. They don't determine the course of, of mankind on planet Earth. God does that, but he uses them. And God was trying to convince Job of this. Job had been through this terrible ordeal, crying out to God, pleading to God. You know how we get sometimes when we, we lose a little faith. We don't have a lot of trust in God. You know what happens. God always steps in to remind us. Let me show you how powerful I am. You see, I like to go out and look at the stars at night, especially in wintertime because the air is clean. And out where I live, there's not a lot of light, so you can see out there. Where I go uh, deer hunting every year, there's no lights anywhere for miles, and you can see everything out in the sky at night, and it looks like they're right here. And I just want, I don't wonder at the stars and say, oh, star bright, star, I, you know, I don't wish upon a star. I pray to the God who made those stars. Because God is the one who controls them. He told Job in Job 38, Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? Remember Orion's belt? That's his bands. Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season? Or canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? Knowest, now, knowest thou the ordinances of heaven Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? God said, I made them. I control their movements. I control their actions. I control their bands. I'm the one who set their movements in order. And I'm always in charge. Why would you want to pray to the stars or to the angels? And let me say this to our Roman Catholic friends. 
These saints that you have a day for, these saints that you pray to, why would you want to pray to them when the Bible says that through Jesus Christ we can go directly to the throne of God? We don't need a saint. We don't need a pope. We don't even need an earthly priest. We already have a high priest. Why would we want to pray to stars and the moon and the sun and worship them when we can just go to the creator of all of these? His name is Jesus Christ. Thank God for the stars giving us the signs and the seasons. But thank God for the one who made those stars. This is Pastor Mike. I've enjoyed myself today. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.